Tell us about your first concert ever with Bush, the Toadies, and Hum. <laughs> um, well, uh, they played at the Fox Theater in Atlanta, and I was uh, I liked all three of those bands. Um, and this girl was going, and I lied and said I was going also, and then I had to go home and buy a ticket and go. But um, I ended up going, and uh, yeah, the whole time I was there, I was just, I mean, it was my first concert ever, and I was just, I was blown away, and uh, I was just kind of like, that's what I want to do uh, if I get the chance, and uh, yeah, it literally changed my life, um, and from then, I went to several more, like, you know, kind of arena rock shows, and because that's all I knew at the time, and then that somehow translated into, like, sort of, like, underground, uh, more punk rock shows, and and then I realized it was like a local scene and, you know, and, uh, and just being able to be like personal with the bands and, you know, up close and everything. I, I, I like that a lot. So for a while I went to every show I could go to, you know what I mean? Just, I didn't care if I knew the band, liked the band, uh, I just went, you know, cause I just love the power of the live show and, um, did that for a long time and then, uh, you know, started a band sometime later. So that particular band in a sense planted the seed for Ludacris. Uh, yeah, yeah, for sure. Um, it, it, you know, everything sort of like built up to that, I guess. But yeah, it was, I mean, it's just nothing I ever thought about. You know, I loved music, but never really thought about seeing them live, you know, seeing anything live. And then um, decided to go and loved it, you know. Are there any other memorable shows from childhood? Perhaps Stuck Mojo? <laughs> I love Stuck Mojo. Um, Stuck Mojo is <laughs> sort of that, um, that uh, gateway drug, if you will, towards the sort of more underground um because i think a band from atlanta played that show that i went and saw and got to talk to them because you know and uh because they were hanging out or whatever come to find out they're from atlanta we're like whoa awesome and so every time they'd play we'd go see it and of course shows got smaller and smaller and more intimate and more intimate from there and um but yeah i mean i loved bands like unsane uh bands like uh uh well uh, much bigger show but I saw um, Smashing Pumpkins a couple times I really love that band and um, yeah I, I saw so many shows I mean just didn't care like just would go if it was like a hole in the wall or if it was like an arena uh, just like to go and check it out I, I even saw a band like didn't much care for like No Doubt but I like went and saw them once like <laughs> just literally like stoked on live you know seeing things live and I loved it so yeah since we're talking about music you grew up listening to, did you listen to The Who? Uh, yeah, of course. My dad was all classic rock all the time, so uh, between The Who and, and uh, Zeppelin and even uh, Leonard Skinner and, you know, a lot of the classics, uh, it was forced upon me, and I thank him <laughs> every day for it. <laughs> I know you guys have been doing the cover of My Generation. <clears throat> yeah, not on this tour. We have such a short time, but, yeah, we have. We've been... Uh, doing that whenever we get a chance what sure. initiated that um i don't remember i think we i think we just wanted it because for a while we did this like sort of uh white stripes uh wasn't really a cover it's kind of a, just an homage this little free jam thing that we had involved the, the chords of but and we just were like we need to just cover a song just straight up you know do a, a, at least a half of a song or part of a song and, um we just love that song and you know, just uh, I like the words and everything about it, and just uh, I think I don't know who initially said let's do it, but we figured it out and just kind of went for it and liked it. You know, so we've been doing it for a while now. Is it something that could appear on One Wing as a B side? Um, not on One Wing, but we have talked about um, the idea of covers and seeing what that looks like. Um, we're not really keen on doing a lot of covers in general. I don't know, there's always that argument of like, do you do it like the band did it, do you do it your own style, whatever, you know, and, and for us, I, I, you know, I just think it's such a thin line of who, what covers would work for the Chariot doing it, you know, but the who obviously works, you know, because of what they did live, and I don't know, you know, just the, the inspiration we already get from them anyway, it's, you know, just felt right, but when we try to think of other songs to cover, you know, there's never a... It's never easy, you know. It's, it, we, we'll chit chat about a couple songs, and it's like, mm, I don't know, you know. Um, obviously, being a predominantly screaming band, you know, there's just I don't know, it kind of narrows the field of what works and doesn't work, and 
bands that we like and don't like and bands that we, you know, I don't know. So the idea is there, uh, but I don't know if it'll ever pan out to be a reality or if it'll just be something we do live for fun, you know. Well, on the topic of the new album, you guys recorded again with Matt Goldman. Yeah. Uh, did Always. you get new wire holders for this one? New wire holders? Yeah. I don't uh, know. Uh, you know how at the end of the, the last track on the album, you can't hang on to them? Oh, yeah, yeah, yeah. <laughs> Yeah, the the wire stripper things. Yeah, um, I don't know. We didn't, we never used them on this one, so <laughs> I don't know. We never had to like to explore that. Um, what are some things you've explored though? For one, well, uh, I don't want to give too much away. We're we're trying to keep it under wraps as long as we can. Uh, I will say that there's a really uh, inspirational quote uh, that's from a really good movie that we took, and we actually got a proper approval for um from the uh the family themselves which was really cool for us i know that's very vague but we're just trying to keep everything under wraps and we don't we don't want to like i don't know there's a lot of tricks in the cd a lot of uh, a lot of uh twists and turns and surprises and we we, we want to keep it sort of the journey you know we, we released that one video for speak um and uh that was just to kind of show the level of the journey that we sort of traveled down for this, you know, um, we wanted to, you know, I don't know, just let everybody know, like, hey, the, the, <clears throat> it could be different, you know what I mean? It's not, it's not necessarily, we're not necessarily based, we're not necessarily like con constrained to like guitars, feedback, drums, and you know, whatever. We we just kind of do whatever we want to do, and um, so keeping that mind from track one to track ten it is a journey you know and i want to i want i'd like to as as best as possible keep it that way and so for us we're not releasing a lot of tracks we're not releasing a lot of songs we're not releasing like you know like a lot of uh hey stream the whole record before it comes out it's like we we want there to be those like mysteries and those and, and it'll probably leak <laughs> if i'm honest but um maybe at that point when people download it like illegally at least they'll still get to go down that journey instead of being like oh yeah i've heard like three of these anyway you know or whatever so um but i will say there's definitely some ups and downs in the record there's uh you know some some uh tricks that we're really proud of and some things that you know much like the wire cutters that were pretty <laughs> that, that make us laugh every time we hear it and so would you say the new albums for fans of every time i die converge in ashley simpson <laughs> mainly ashley simpson um, <laughs> The, the Ashley Simpson that on Saturday Night Live, that Ashley Simpson, that's, that's no. Um, Tell us the story of the stickers. <clears throat> Our stickers that we have now or that sticker? The, the Ashley Simpson. Well, stickers. what's funny is uh, we were on Solid State at the time, and uh, one of the guys who sort of handled that area of Solid State's You're long, an R rep. Yeah, he, he, he's a longtime friend of mine. Uh, our second show I ever played in my entire life was with at his venue back when he lived in Alabama so he calls me up with this sticker idea says something about I don't even remember now something about a circus performer and fans of Every Time I Die and Ashley Simpson and just straight thought he was joking I mean he called me all the time for ran, you know he was like yo listen to this okay huh? and then hung up I was like yes let's do it that's awesome you know and then we talked about other stuff and then hung up the phone and then sure enough it became a reality <laughs> and I was like sweet I love it you know so um, I don't care. You know what I mean? Like, none of us really care about, like, I don't know, for fans of this, 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 like, what does that mean? You know, it's like, hopefully if you like Ashley Simpson, you will like us. I mean, who cares? <laughs> you know what I mean? It's music, you know? Um, why, why do you have to like just one thing that's dumb? So, uh, yeah, we just, anything that makes us laugh, we're easily into it. <laughs> Speaking of Chad Johnson, uh, he's done a lot of A&R with a lot of different bands, um, including As Cities Burn. Yeah. And you also co-produced Son, I Love You. True. Um, I did an interview with them in 2008, and I have a <clears> quote from you. Or, well, from, from them. <laughs> okay. Um, we were talking about the influence of media on the public. Um, and Cody says, uh, Kids who are just trying to find what's cool will just believe whatever a magazine will say. In the end, the only thing that's lasting are the songs, if you have any kind of message. What are your that's thoughts? Um... As far as the masses in general, I, I believe, you know, I mean, like, used to, I don't know what it's doing now. I mean, used to, you know, you had MTV and stuff like that, and they'd force what they want on you, and you, in general, you know, you got the masses that just kind of, they go with whatever they're supposed to go with, you know? I mean, 
the powers that be know what they're doing, you know, and between the MTVs and the uh, the radio and stuff like that, you know, they they would they could make whoever as big as they want because they have they no offense to anyone, but the general public's just gonna like sort of you hear it enough times, you get to like it, you go with it, you know. Mm-hmm. And then there was like the under, underground scene that used to exist, and you know they thought for themselves, you know what I mean, and. You, you hear it on the radio that doesn't necessarily mean I'm going to like it you know and you, you go out and you find your own bands and you go out and you you go to live shows and you see these things and you, you just discover them yourself you know and and you yourself decide I like this I don't like this um, and so it's 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 a funny thing because you know with the underground world that um, sort of used to be there it it was a it was a lot of people that sort of prided themselves on like hey yeah this might be an obscure band but like I like it because in theory it's just genuinely good it's not it's not got the support of all these powers that be and this stuff so it became more about just the songs you know these songs are good I like them I'm going to keep listening to them and they're so good I'm going to show them to my friend and hopefully that friend will show them to his and that's that's how it existed that's how uh, punk rock scene of, of the early uh, 80s and etc like that's how it even existed you know or whatever because of just word of mouth and stuff you know um and then now you got this whole weird gray area of like what's the masses and what's punk rock, what's what's big, what's small. You know, you got the internet like sort of merging those gaps, and and uh, I, I, a lot of people are scared by it. A lot of people are like worried about. It. I know it, it's doing a, a real damage on the music industry in one way, but I I for one I, I think it's great. I think anything that allows an artist to be an artist is amazing and. You're getting to a day and age where you don't need a label, and you don't need a, uh, you know, you don't. We, we definitely don't need majors. You know what I mean? And the majors are the ones you used to, you know, back in the day, outside of the punk rock scene, you, you had to have them. You know, you had to get their approval and make it and get on the radio, and that's how you toured. Otherwise, who are you? You know. And with the internet, you don't need that. You know, and you don't, you don't need. Um, you can be your own thing, and all the technology becoming cheaper and cheaper to be able to record. Like, I love it. You know, I think, I think there's artists who have fallen by the wayside for decades just because they didn't get that one chance that one break that they didn't get to perform in front of that one guy that is going to make them a star or whatever you know i love it i think it's awesome that you know if you do the right research and the right stuff on it on internet you can like you can find a guy who's just an artist who doesn't really want to deal with people doesn't really want to do the marketing thing but he does good stuff um so i think and maybe i'm wrong we all have our opinions but i think it is becoming more and more and more about just the music and more about the songs and more about, hey, this is good, this is not good, and less about, well, the radio's been shoving this in my face, MTV's been shoving it in my face, magazines have been shoving it in my face, and therefore the masses thinks it's good, you know what I mean? I think it's becoming more about the art and less about the, uh, about the um, I don't know, sort of the what the, the powers that be put around the art, you know? Um, I think we're going that direction. I don't know that we're there yet. I mean, there's definitely some... Uh, I, I'm sure there's people that argue that with me, you know, and whatever. That's just what I see, you know, because at the end of the day, like I said, I mean, you don't have major labels as, as big, any, as powerful as as they used to be, and, and I don't know. Me, personally, I never listen to the radio, so I don't really know what's going on there, but, you know, it, with the Internet, you can do, make your own decisions, and I like, I like that, you know. I, I like that you don't need, you know... Uh, financial uh, power to, to just to, to, to make a living doing this, you know, that's cool to me. On a separate topic, any interesting tour stories on this particular run? <laughs> oh man, I always go blank when I get asked that question. No jumping off bridges into rivers, right? No, not this tour. It's been hot enough, might as well. Yeah. Um, I'm sure there's something crazy. I, I can't ever think about it though. Well, what's this about throwing flour on Alisana? <laughs> that was ages ago. Uh, we did a tour with them. Uh, it, was a, it was a long time ago now, but, you know, they, they did a... Uh, they'd always end the set and come back for their encore or whatever, and it's the last day of tour, I believe, and um, and uh, <clears throat> they always wore, wore all black, you know, and they'd all be sweaty from their show, and they'd walk... They walked outside. This venue is perfect. They walked outside you know to cool off for just like a few minutes before they went back to the encore and uh me and one other guy on the other side of the stage as soon as they walked out the door we 
shut the door and kept it closed. And then we had a bunch of people with like, I don't know how many pounds of flour, just, just boom, like <laughs> nailed them. So it, like, so anyway, I, at one point I was just sitting there holding the door. I didn't get to see the actual thing take place. And I was like, I wonder if it's done. You know, I, I didn't know. And I opened the door and it was just all white. You know, it was like nighttime, but it was <laughs> oh, all man. white. I couldn't see anything. And all of a sudden I see these like ghostly figures come in. They're like, <clears throat> you know, coughing. And they're all like from head to toe, solid white. And I was like, and then, you know, they, they laughed a little bit, but then went up to, you know, they're sweaty, so it's all sticking to them. They went up to play, and, uh, and it was actually awesome, like, you know, because they, they went up to play anyway, and every time they'd headbang, you know, it'd just be like this powder of, you know, flour, and, and uh, it actually looked really cool. And then by the end of it, you know, they're like half white, half black, like sweat <laughs> stains and, and, and flour stains, and it was awesome.